Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of HPE Discover 2021. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. I've got a couple of guests with me here from Infosys. Alumni, Uma Lakshampathy is back, Senior Vice President and Regional Head of AMIA at Infosys. Uma, it's great to see you. Welcome back to the program. Yeah, hi, Lisa. It's, it's great to be back uh, for Discover 2021. It's been a great opportunity to uh, meet with a, a lot of our stakeholders in HPE. Excellent, we're going to dig into that. And Saju Kadi is here as well, the CTO, Cloud Advisory VP, Hybrid Cloud Engineering Platforms and Automation at Infosys. Saju, welcome to the program. Thank you, Lisa. It's a pleasure to be in the program. It's my first time, but I really enjoy this program. Well, welcome, welcome. So the next 15 minutes or so, we're going to unpack um, a survey that was just done. As we know, cloud has catalyzed a lot in the last year, one of those being cloud adoption. Talk to us about some of the things that you've seen as more and more enterprises are moving workloads to cloud. How is a hybrid cloud enabling businesses to grow, enabling them to actually have a competitive edge? Uh, Lisa, if you, uh, if you look at uh, the pre-COVID scenario and uh, what, uh, there are many, many clients which actually made a significant move into cloud uh, but there were many few, a few of the companies who, who didn't really take a mature uh, uh, cloud adoption. But those companies which actually did the adoption, we see that have taken a big step with the help of the, when the COVID hit them, so because they were able to be very resilient, but at the same time, they were able to, the cloud adoption really helped them to improve their business profits. Uh, when we did this cloud radar survey across the, all the geographies, we did it across the US, the LATAM, the Asia Pacific, the EMEA markets. And when we looked at uh, uh, what our clients and enterprises were able to recover and get out of this whole cloud adoption, we, we got a, a, a number of 414 billions of profits that the uh, enterprises can make uh, by using this cloud adoption. And that's what we saw in this uh, survey that we did with our clients. Yeah, that's huge. Enterprises, the survey found, can add up to, you said, 414 billion in net new profits annually through effective cloud adoption. Uma, speaking with you for a second, what does Infosys describe as effective cloud adoption? Uh, when we look at uh, cloud adoption, uh, we have enterprises who started shifting workloads, which were very comfortable for them. And then, uh, then they started to take the more mature understanding of moving workloads, which were very critical to the business. So when we look at effective, it is a combination of both. The ones that were very easy to go to the cloud, the ones that made uh, businesses able to bring in new applications and new go-to markets uh, to their segments, to their clients. But then it is also about taking some of those legacy workloads and making a choice, uh, the right choice to take it by transforming those applications and environments uh, into the cloud adoption. And that's what we call as effective. It's just not the um, easy ones, but also those uh, complex and uh, legacy riddled ones that, that effectively goes on to transform itself into a new way for, the, for their clients and for the experience of the users. So big changes coming, big opportunities. So as you, we see, we've talked about this for many times, more and more companies moving to multi-cloud arrangements for a variety of reasons. What have been some of the things that Infosys has experienced and what are some of your viewpoints on uh, multi-cloud? Thank you, Lisa. So um, if you look around, right, you know, hybrid cloud has been the new normal, right? And, um, and if you look at it, private cloud is becoming an essential component for hosting applications, you know, it, uh, you know, when you look at it, it's more about applications which um, have low latency requirements. You know, it has regulatory requirements, or it has a static demand of infrastructure. Now, what Infosys has done in this space is, is that you know we have um, we have developed a framework which we call it as a right cloud solution framework, and this is focused on implementing a hybrid multi cloud leveraging an in-house developed tools and frameworks as well as platforms along with our strategic partner ecosystem. That is our biggest contribution onto the hybrid multi-cloud world. Now, the foundation of our framework is Infosys Polycloud Platform. It's a unified multi-cloud management platform. It can provision, it can orchestrate, it can also manage 
the cloud deployment across multiple of the environments. It can be a private, it can be a public, or it can be on the edge. Now, apart from all of these things, it also offers features and functionalities very similar to the hyperscalers. And either it can be in terms of the user experience or it can be in a commercial model or a technology stack or it can be reports or it can be persona based user experience and integration with multiple systems. It brings all of these functionalities seamlessly across the multiple hybrid ecosystem today. That's the biggest contribution from Infosys in this space. Got it, okay. Uma, as we see the just clear growth of multi-cloud in every industry, talk to us about what the Cloud Radar Survey uncovered with respect to, you mentioned that big number, the correlation between cloud transformation and profitable growth for enterprises across any industry. So um, I, I did mention about that, uh, Lisa, in, a, in the previous uh, question as well. When we looked at, when we look at enterprises trying to take the cloud adoption, the big benefits for the enterprises do happen when they cross that uh, layer of moving a significant part of their existing legacy in a very transformed new world. And that brings in the new way of working for their customers, for their end users, and internally as well for their various stakeholders. And that I think is creating a cost structure for them, which is very, very optimal from where they were but at the same time, it is enabling their ecosystem of, of users and customers to come and operate in a very seamless fashion. And that is the biggest advantage of, uh, of boosting profits for them at the same time, cutting costs within the, uh, within the internal stakeholders. So at one stage, you're optimizing your cost. At the other stage, you're bringing in a easiness for your clients to operate on, which is actually creating that uh, enlarged profit uh, boost. Uma, sticking with you for a second, if we unpack that growth, that, that business profit growth opportunity that you, the survey uncovered, are we talking about things like faster time to market, increasing scale? What are some of the things underneath that hood? So if you, if you look at uh, traditionally, cloud was considered uh, the enabler for quick, faster time to market. But now uh, cloud has become the central theme for resilience. If you look at uh, the COVID pandemic, uh, those those enterprises which were already cloud enabled were able to resiliently and sustain their business and grow their businesses. So as economy started opening up, if I, I, I can talk about an automotive uh, client who is today uh, enriching businesses out of China because they have the first economy that has opened up after the pandemic. So you see a lot of enablement for those enterprises which have already taken the cloud journey. And if you look at Today, enterprises are in somewhere in around 17 to 18% of, of uh, cloud adoption. And if they can take that to the 40%, that's when they, we will see that kind of boosted profits. And we can clearly see about 400 plus billion dollars of profits that enterprises can make. All right, Saju, let's talk to you for a second. If we look at some of the survey results, the acceleration that is expected to be seen by in the next year, of enterprises moving so many more workloads to cloud. You talked about hybrid cloud. Talk to me about how the experience of working with HPE in creating joint solution suites is going to help the customers facilitate and drive that transformation. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, so if you look at HPE, HPE comes with a fine set of technology and commercial constructs, you know, that complements our right cloud framework. And they offer the, the solutions, the whole sort of lot of solutions offer private cloud as a service, you know, which is a major component of our right cloud framework. Either it is a container as a service with HPE's Azimeral data platform on HPE hardware, or VDI as a service based on a composable and converged infrastructure, or HPE's cloud built on HPC cloud built on Cray systems and all of them commercially supported with an HPE's GreenLake offering makes it very attractive for our customers. Now these integrations have helped us in providing a very seamless metering and billing along with the chargeback solutions very much in line with what is being provided by hyperscalers. Apart from this, we also work very closely with HPE to create a very compelling sourcing strategy for driving hybrid cloud, 
prevent digital transformation while taking cost out and protecting the existing investments through various financial models for our customers, helping them in terms of transforming their digital estate in the, in, in, in the new cloud world. And Uma, I want to get your perspective as well. The HPE Infosys partnership, talk to me about that being a win-win for your clients in every industry. So actually, uh, um, um, Lisa, it's a great question. And this uh, probably is my uh, third uh, CUBE interview. And uh, I've told this previously as well in my previous interviews as well. The relationship between Infosys and HPE is very, very strategic. And it's, it's very, very top-down driven. And today uh, we've seen very high transformative opportunities that two organizations have come together. And we won't call it win-win, but we call it win-win-win, which is essentially a win for HPE, win for emphasis, but a win for the clients as well. So if you look at some of the uh, engagements that we have jointly done, everything has been transformative. I can talk about uh, uh, energy client where we've done a huge uh, virtual VDI uh, engagement with them where we have been able to take them very uh, seamlessly when the COVID pandemic hit them so that their uh, significant part of their IT users will be able to operate uh, from their residences. Uh, I can talk about a great story about uh, how we had enabled GreenLake for a wind energy company uh, and how that GreenLake capability helped the customer to migrate the application seamlessly uh, to a hybrid cloud. And there are so many examples of similar scale and size when we look at uh, clients in the manufacturing space and the automobile sector, where we've really done uh, work very closely with HP across all regions and all geographies uh, to, uh, to make this what I would call a win-win-win partnership. I like that, win, win, win. Who wouldn't want that? One more question, Uma, for you. Talk to me about the next, as we talked about some of those survey results, and I think folks can find that survey, the Cloud Radar survey on the emphasis.com website. I found it on the homepage there. But looking at how much transformation is expected in you know, the next 12 months or so, what are some of the things that we can expect from Emphasis and HPE to help drive and catalyze that growth that you expect to see in the next 12 months? Uh, yeah, and I was talking to you before this interview and you said that, yes, we had to look at this and I was feeling very happy that you had the opportunity to look at the site and you said that, look, there's an opportunity to also make, to continuously provide feedback. And we, we're very happy for clients to come in and look at it and do provide us the feedback. This is a constant learning for us. We are a big learning company. Uh, and when it comes to uh, the next 12 months of agenda, I think the pipeline is very robust for both us and the HP in, in terms of the way we want to take proactive transformational opportunities to, the, to our clients, uh, create a value differentiation on the hybrid cloud for them. And uh, clearly uh, this, this survey clearly came back to reflect back to us that our strategy that we've done together as, uh, as uh, partners is the right strategy because there is a significant headroom for growth uh, in the cloud space uh, for both uh, Infosys and HPE. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining me today, talking to me about what Infosys and HPE are doing together, unpacking some of the significant insights that the Cloud Radar survey has uncovered. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Absolutely. For Uma you, and Saju, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of HPE Discover 2021.